We are on our way down to the south coast of the UK to meet up with a friend of Drive Tribe. His name is Jimmy Broadbent and you may have seen him on the channel before. He's a sim racing YouTuber and he has created a 300,000 subscriber channel from a shed in his mum's garden. That's a pretty unique story. So we're gonna head down there, have a chat with Jimmy and find out how he created this channel from a shed. Jimmy has built a YouTube channel with over 350,000 subscribers, focused around sim racing and the odd arcade driving game. Being most famous for his Nürburgring lap time videos, he also has a role as a commentator for the Gran Turismo World Tour, Gran Turismo's eSports competition. He is one of the most loyal fan bases in the industry, which is only going to keep growing. And here we are. We'll get to this later. Jimmy! Hello, Mike. Good to see you. And you do come in, first of all. How are you doing? I'm incredibly cold. <laughs> As you see, sunny Sussex at the moment. It's brilliant. It's the best part of this country. But yeah, welcome to the, the garden and I'm going to lead you down to my lair. Absolutely. You're leading me down to what is probably one of the most famous sheds in the world. It's kind of weird actually thinking that. People always say that sort of stuff to me, but. It's odd to think, because it's just where I live, this little box at the bottom of my garden, you know. So. Next thing will be a sponsored video by, I don't know, Black & Decker Oh, that's, that's the dream. Being q going to come in <laughs> and, just, and just buy the channel, that's it. Nice little pond. Yeah, it's actually quite a nice garden, this. It's a bit run down right now, because it's winter, um, okay. as you can see. But there are my friends and family there on the right. <laughs> I bet they're right. good in the morning. <laughs> And this is... Here it is. This is the shed, as terrible as it looks on the outside. It's a bit better on the inside, if not a little bit cosy. May I come in? Oh, go on then. Go on then. This time. This time only. So, Jimmy, this is the shed, and mm. it's very much dominated by bed and rig. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the two main things in my life, sleep and racing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've got them side by side. It's a bit cramped in here, but you get, you get used to it after a while. But this is where it all happens. Mm, yeah, this is the uh, the a rig. Hell of a rig. It's it's pretty mad. Um, it's provided by my sponsor, Hussenveld, who are a great bunch of guys, and it's super sturdy. Like this is a proper bucket seat on here as well. You can put this in a car, and it's legal sort of thing. So for like the immersion side of things, it's pretty cool. I mean, it is just like a a, a big boy toy really, <laughs> but it's really awesome to have and uh, makes. The streaming making videos a lot more a lot easier you know and did you start where most people started for it's you know bolting a small wheel to a table oh definitely man and... like when i when i first started doing youtube it was a really cheap play seat it was like 150 quid i say cheap in context everything else and a, a logitech wheel i used that for years and it was fine i mean um but you just start chasing more and more kind of immersion and feel and you get to a point like this where i think there's not much more i'd ever want now and like i can keep it forever pretty much so uh it's a bit of money but i think it's worth it and when you think about a whole host of sim racing youtubers some of them can be quite into actual sim racing mm. and not really be car guys but looking around you're 100 percent a car guy oh. some of these models are insane 100 percent. yeah i mean I've, I've been sent a lot of these and i, I love having them on display you know, the porsche 919 and our boy the tractor the audi yeah, r18 it, explain to the audience why that car means so much to you okay so this car up here is the 2016 audi r18 and uh we my team uh which is called doug henson racing online yeah. we've always raced this this lmp1 car in every every chance we've got we've had two podiums at the moment, one was a win in it, 24 hours, that's an entire 24 hour race, sharing yeah. it between four people. And we've, I've won individual championships in this, so we've won team championships, we've won everything we can win in this car. So when people see our channel, they kind of go, oh yeah, the tractor, that thing. It's, 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 it's kind of cool to have that uh, affinity with a, a real life car, you know. And I guess that's a big part of your channel as well. It's not just YouTube uploads, mm. it is full racing live streams where, again, 24 hour races, you're doing stints. Yeah, it's yeah. the full shebang. Well, I mean, we're all just frustrated racing drivers, you know. Yeah. We, we all wish we could do, do it in real life. And you know, fortunately now I'm kind of getting the opportunities to do that. But for the longest time, it just seemed unattainable. It's so much money to do racing. So when you can say, you know, ignore this rig, but when you can say maybe go racing for an entire season for like 300, 400 quid, you, you're in, you know, you're straight away. And so you find people who are equally as sad as you are, get together, and then here you are. 
the shed has become synonymous with your channel. How mm. did you end up in here? How did the sort of Jimmy Broadbent journey from here start? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a, a bit of a meme now, a bit of a joke now, me living in the shed. But it wasn't really a very nice start, to be honest. Like I used to, um, I, well, I still do. I had a lot of problems with my mental health, especially with um, just being sociable. That was terrible for me back in the day. But it's yeah. a quite severe depression, amongst some other things, and. Essentially, long story short, it cost me my job, it cost me a, a relationship, it cost me where I lived at the time and I had nowhere else to go. I was homeless, I had uh, no money and had to basically move back home. And mum, bless her, said, well, you know, we've got this thing down at the bottom of the garden, it's not really habitable. Yeah. I, was, I was like, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> so, you know, and so I ended up living down here and um, basically kind of used this little other place to start focusing on other things and just got hyper focused into YouTube and then that eventually kind of lifts me back out of it again. But I think it's really important to to recognise that it wasn't always a very happy place living here. So, but you know, it's it's served as somewhere to live, and you don't need to live in a big fancy house, especially if you're doing stuff online. And this this has been enough for me. And although you've got a fairly humble abode here, you yeah. have a pretty sick car collection going on. Yeah. Explain how you <laughs> well. Let's go with your first car, your first sort of YouTube car, and where it is now. Okay, yeah, so I, uh, I get a lot of stick for that. And I think rightly so, you know, I, I do understand how ludicrous it is to have like three cars and live in this. Well, <laughs> priorities. <laughs> you've got a bed, you've got a rig. Well, they, they, they say you can, you know, you can live in a car, but you can't raise a house. So there you go. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> so my first car I bought back in 2014 is a 1993 Unos Mazda MX-5. It's my baby, I've had it forever. And it started off as a 1.6, I bought it for 700 quid, with loads of rust on it, you know, and it was just one of those things where you look at it and go, avoid that, but... Now, when I hear I your people it. saying it started as, that yeah. means you've gone and ruined it, but... I was ruined, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think um, watching some of your videos, James May might think I've ruined it a bit, but... Um, so basically now, it's it's a, essentially a racing car now, um, or a track car, it's not quite... It, it still needs a full cage, but it's, it's getting there. So it's gone from being a sub-100 horsepower, LA to a 330 horsepower turbo. Whilst, thing. Yeah, whilst still weighing like 950 kilos. So it's terrifying. That's also a death trap. <laughs> it is, but it's my death trap. And am I right in saying you used to have a Mondeo? I did. I used to have a um, the one after yours, the ST220. We could have had a great group test video. We could have done. 200 versus 220. Mine didn't last that long though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully yours lasts a bit longer. But there is a piece de resistance to your car collection, so let's go and check that out now. There is, yeah, let's do it. So Jimmy, people can say all they want about sim racing as a profession, mm -hmm. but it leads to this. Tell us about this machine. Okay, so this is uh, my 1993 R32 GTR Skyline. Uh, it is one of 141 in this colour, and uh, it is my baby. It used to belong to a uh, racing driver called Jan Marvin, but also from Gran Turismo, so a bit of a, yeah. bit, bit of a Also a sim set. racer. Also a sim place. racer as well. He went from being a sim racer to a Super GT driver. And this is the Gran Turismo car, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, it's, it's been in the GT family in some way or another for the last eight or nine years. So it's kind of really nice to keep it and keep it in a little family. You know? Now I have driven an R35, but I have never driven or even sat in mm. a proper Skyline. So can we please go for a drive? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm cold, so let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a proper door. It is. That is a satisfying thunk. Everything about this car is kind of satisfying. That's how I describe it. And I've got to go for oh, yeah, four million different keys in my pocket. Anyway, let's rock and roll, shall we? So you must have to pinch yourself whenever you're kicking about in this. I mean, you deserve your success, obviously, but mm. having been a gamer and driven this car in Gran Turismo and then now it's yours. Pretty much. It's very weird to kind of think that um, sitting in front of a, uh, a camera, a webcam and shouting for a living can get you to this point. Um, but I guess I'm proof that it can happen. And for me, this is like a dream car. It's my dream car. Some people dream about Ferraris, some people dream about Lamborghinis, but for me, it's always been the R32 GTR. It's, it's Godzilla. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. got such a reputation to it. And it's definitely not the fastest car in the world. Um, it's not slow either, but 
I mean, for like a 30 year old car, you can drive it around and feel like you're driving something modern. It just feels nice and easy, you know. So this will be a real point in your YouTube career. When you first entered the shed, you were on how many subscribers? Uh, I think about like maybe six or seven thousand subscribers when, we, when I first started uh, streaming from there. And now we're at over 350k. So. Right. And when did you get this? How long have you had this car? I had this uh, a couple of days before my birthday. So I got it back in June uh, of last year. So I've had it about six months now. And are you starting to make that shift now? So you're obviously a sim racer at heart, but now that you've got a proper car collection, are you trying to move the channel more towards car stuff? Well, for me, like the car stuff is it's a more of a personal thing for me. Like I love having these cars and I love showing them off, but also like uh, my content's always been about racing. I love racing. Yeah. I love cars, of course, but I also love racing. And um, I do want to do more stuff in the real world, but at the same time, I think it's about bridging a gap. You know, some people get a bit defensive about um, people who play video games coming along and then suddenly driving cars yeah. or doing cars because yeah. they're oh, it's not a proper, uh, not a proper way of doing things. But in reality, it's just another avenue into it. You know, I honestly think, in terms of like simulated stuff, that sim racing will be complementary to something like karting in a racing driver's career in a few years time it's got to that point now it really is quite amazing now i can anticipate some of you guys dropping into the comments saying oh he just sits on a chair and plays games all day go on to his channel and check out two videos check out a mclaren gt4 driver in the top gear track and also check out a more recent video where he's in a one series bmw around a track called asset you oh, absolutely yeah ripped it around there. That was a lot of fun. And, and the thing is, we, we spoke about this a bit earlier on, but it's about kind of confidence, really. You get into it and you think, this car, I, I, can, I can drive. I, do it, I can do it in the simulator. I can do it here. And that's like the first big hurdle to get by, is that you get out on track and convince yourself to put your foot down. Because fast cars can be scary if you're not used to them, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, quite, it's quite an uh, abusive thing to hit the throttle on a car and go quickly. But yeah, it's... It was a really cool opportunity, and for me, it just kind of really validates sim racing as well. Look out, look, look what it can do. And in terms of milestones, I imagine when you're building a channel, especially from your shed, yeah. to think that when you live stream, I mean, you've had how many viewers? 12,000? Yeah, the peak was a peak concurrent viewership of 12,000, which doesn't sound like much when you say, oh, but you get X amount of views in the video, but to have 12,000 people there at once watching, yeah, that, that would have put me... It's a decent in, football stadium. I, 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 yeah, I think I was one of the highest channels on YouTube at that point streaming. Like, it's Amazing. mad. And, that, and that's for, like, a pretend race at Le Mans, you know. But I always like to say with sim racing, it sounds a bit cheesy, but, like, whilst the, you know, the, the cars aren't real, the track isn't real, the racing is real. The emotions of the racing are real. Yeah. yeah. And for those of us who can't get into real cars and do that, um, you know, that's, it's a great substitute, I think. It ain't bad. And if you were to go back to, say, 2015, 2016, Jimmy, yeah, and then see yourself drive past in this, you would think, what the hell has gone on? Well, what has happened? I've won the lottery or something. Well, I remember struggling to one day re replace a fuel filter on my little MX-5 because I couldn't afford to take it to the garage and do it there yeah. and get fuel on myself and burning my arm, etc. And uh, to imagine then that guy driving this around, it's, it's, yeah, you don't really get used to it. It's very weird. But at the same time, like, it's really important to stay grounded. You get so many YouTubers who reckon they're like God's gift to the world. Not really. Like know. James May. Yeah, James May, you know. The peak influence of James May coming out now. <laughs> um, but really, in reality, you know, we're just someone who shout for a living. And then outside of that, we're just normal. Same with everybody else, you know. Yeah. But if you just like, That noise. Yeah. Oh, oh, go for it, I hike him back up. Is it, is it broken? No, that's it. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. Sorry, guys. There you go. See, mind-bending power there. <laughs> even breaks the car. But the, the best thing about the car, right, is when you're just if you're just going slowly. Yep. And every now and then you just oh. you get the uh, the blow off. Oh, <laughs> I know. It's a proper. That is lovely. If someone was to look at your channel, say someone in the drive drivetrain audience is completely new to you. <laughs> Such a nice dude. Oh, <laughs> it's good. <isn't> it? <laughs> 
say they're looking at your channel from the outside and they see a guy who's sim racing, he's kicking about in a R32 Skyline GTR without blowing your own trumpet, <laughs> what would you say has made you as successful as you've become? What, what's your USP? Uh, I don't know really. I mean, like behind the scenes, it's just dedication. Like you, um, funnily enough, Jan said it really well in a video I watched of him where he said that if you want to be good at something or want to be successful in something, you have to want it enough that you put time into it and that you sacrifice other things to get here. You know, like for me, like the sacrifice was not seeing my friends as much, not going out as much, making sure that I was streaming at the right point, making sure I was doing the right sort of content and stuff like that. But otherwise, I think in terms of what I like to have as like the USB in the channel is it's racing should be accessible by everybody. The, the thing with motorsport, and it's pretty much the only sport that does this outside of maybe horse riding, is that there's a barrier to entry of a lot of feckin' money, yeah. you know? And for people like me, um, growing up, we you know, lived in council houses our entire life. Like, I wanted to go karting, my mum couldn't afford it, so we, didn't, so we didn't do it, you know? And it's not really a sob story, more just of a, that would have been nice to do. And sim racing allows people to do that and do so on equal ground. All the cars in sim racing are the same. You know, there's no like, oh, how's the car running today? Oh, I don't really know. It, it, it all runs the same. Yeah. So I think for me, it's just being able to promote that and say that, hey, you know, we all get the chance to pretend to be a racing driver for a bit. And that's really cool. So go 10 years down the line, where do you want Jimmy Broadbent to be? Is it <laughs> sim racer? Is it commentator? Is it full on racing driver? What's, oh. the, what's the dream? Hopefully in a slightly bigger shed. Um, <laughs> but um, I think the, I don't know, the, the dream, I guess, is to keep doing what I'm doing and just have a job that I enjoy in 10 years' time. If it's this, great. If it's someone else, even better, you know. I'm really lucky to be to do what I do now as a job and I wouldn't want to, like, sound ungrateful for that because I'm infinitely grateful. So if I could just continue doing this, that'd be amazing. But if I could do more racing, even better. Well, I'm obviously from Scotland and we are very proud of how good our fish and chips are but yeah. i've heard that the fish and chips in hastings is particularly oh you're good. damn right all, all these northerners coming in like, oh my, my <laughs> fish no 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 it's, it's all down the south baby if you're not next to the sea your fish and chips is bad that's all right. it is so let's go to the beachfront and i'll i'll be the judge of that let go Sim racing is going from strength to strength, being a genuine way into motorsport these days. And Jimmy has been riding that wave, using his unique presenting style to make the industry sit up and take notice. But as he mentioned back in the shed, the channel means more to him than simply being his place of work. Right, Jimmy, let's see what these English fish and chips are all about. I'm telling you, man, they're better, they just are. There's, there's, there's no room for argument. It's not bad. Yeah. Right. Now, the one thing I think that's quite cool about you is you're a YouTuber who's more than happy to sort of take mental health on front on. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that sim racing has been a part of that? Do you think it's a, quite a cathartic thing for someone who's maybe struggling a bit? I think it can be. I think you have to have the right mindset for it, as with all things in mental health. I mean, when I was really ill, it was very difficult to really find any sort of joy in anything. You know, that's one of the big, the big things is you lose interest in your hobbies and people yeah. and whatever. And, and for me, cars and racing has always been like a massive part of my life. I, I, can't, I can't remember a time where I didn't like racing or cars. So to kind of sit down in the evenings and go, right, you're going to take part in this race now. It's going to take two hours. You've got to concentrate. You've got to do well at this. And Sometimes you wouldn't do so well, but sometimes you get a good result and you can say, look, here is an objective good result and an objective good thing you've done today. And yeah, it's sim racing, you know, but it's yeah. small steps and those sort of things help you. And then on, in the extension of that, I got to meet all those close friends who I now race with today and I've met them in real life and got to do crazy things like travel the world with Gran Turismo, you know, and yeah. that's not going to happen for everyone, unfortunately. I mean, I, I wish it could, but I think it was just a really it was really good to get into and just concentrate. I really, I really recommend people, if they're into racing and thinking, oh, I don't really know, then give it a shot. 
And I guess that thing over there is a sign of where you are now, where you've come from, and that is the result. It's always kind of mad thinking that I own it still. You know, we've, you know, I've said that a couple of times today, but it also is an indicator, as you say, of you know, this is the work you've done, these are the hours you've put in. You know, I've many, many nights that you don't really sleep very well because you're thinking of the next idea, or you're recording something, or you're streaming, mm. and sometimes it's hard to think that part of it's worth it, but then also at the same time to be able to entertain so many people and to have be part of such a cool community and get to have that of course it's pretty cool I'm, I'm, I'm a lucky boy I'm a lucky boy well hopefully we'll see more of this car on the channel but uh, do I get to drive it next time? no no? <laughs> we come all the way down to Hastings and meet your Carly Cawson with sunsets and fish and chips and the answer is that, no. that sounds like a new problem <laughs> <laughs> bloody ridiculous